Hello, fam. How's it going? Boy, howdy. Did we run into a bunch of hitches trying to set this up? Um, which is very appropriate given the subject matter. Um, but basically, tonight's tonight's drawing is going to be uh, Daisy Duck, uh, her uh, newest rendition in the uh, 2000... When did that premiere? 2018, I believe they call it. Um, DuckTales? The newest incarnation, you know, the one that's going around. Um, people were super hyped that uh, this character premiered. Um, I haven't actually watched the episode all the way through, but people were doing tons of, of fan art of her, and uh, I, I caught the bug, and I was like, ah, I'll spend one morning, and I'll do a, a, a drawing of her. What's the worst that could happen? Well, I mean... To be perfectly honest, I had, it was a bit of a slog going through this drawing. And uh, although I guess that's pretty appropriate to talk about, um, to actually discuss what happens when you're not feeling a particular drawing and um, what happens when you do invest some time into it and... Uh, do you do you push all the way through, or do you um, do you start over from the beginning? All these are like per perfectly appropriate responses, actually. Although I will say, going back to uh, my uh, college days rant that I did a little earlier with the um, the the peg drawing, uh, my watercolor teacher said that you know what you've you've invested all this time into something even even you know if you've invested enough time and there is something that you like about it then you might as well try and salvage it just to say that you sort of pushed through and and created something here i was trying to do something with perspective and i didn't quite uh succeed Basically, because I'm going about it the wrong way, at least uh, from sort of my rec recollection, I didn't actually, uh, I didn't actually open up any of my my references um, for how to, uh, you know, get started in perspective. I do a kind of okay job, but I really just wanted to, uh, frankly, do some shortcuts and. Uh, Turns out I was not happy with uh, the results. Basically, um, one good way of, of getting a character of proportions is to figure out... Uh, basically, draw over a drawing and figure out where the proportions lie. And uh, it works out pretty good most of the time. You can sort of uh, get a gist of how a character is built. And there's another trick I will use a little bit later, and that's actually worked out fantastically. I've got all these uh, sketches of um, of various characters, partic particularly for this one project that I had planned and still have planned. And I was uh, figuring out the best way to uh, draw this this character, and I found out from a tutorial from oh gosh, I couldn't. I, they go by something brothers. You may have seen them on Twitter. I save, I fave them all the time. Um, but they like create a an outstanding amount of tutorials, and they post them all for free. Of course, they have a book that's in a compilation that is available for purchase. And um, I should just, whenever I get some disposable income, I should just break down and and okay, you know what, I'm. I'm figuring out, rewatching my drawing, I'm figuring out exactly where I went wrong. The, the square should be a little bit more tilted. Um, I mean, I sort of get what I'm going for. I'm trying to like, this is the main, this is the, this is the, uh, the side that's closest to you. And this is the side that's as furthest away, but I should have raised that side up a little more to get it in proper perspective for what I ended up wanting to do. But anyway, this is another trick. It's uh, just, you just block out a character's proportions and then you can move them or adjust them 
in different perspectives. It's uh, actually, you know, quite, it is quite effective. Um, but for some reason, there must have been some sort of step that I was missing or I just wasn't feeling it and I ended up just just really kind of struggling with this this one drawing um, any questions uh, what's your next drawing I don't know actually I have a list I started um, making a list no no this is the wrong one this is episode uh, them's fighting herds Okay, that's a reminder list. This is a list of things I have to do tomorrow. I have to fix some bricks in the in the walkway, put some sand under them, and then pull out a, a giant weed in one of the bushes. Uh, let's see. I have here uh, Batman Beyond Girl. I think that's... Do they call her Tracy? She's voiced by Cree Summers. You know, the Batman... Uh, uh, Terry's best friend at school uh, got purple hair um, I, was, I just remembered her out of nowhere and I was like oh yeah I should draw her that would be an interesting one hmm. <sighs> any particular thoughts about the new Mickey Mouse cartoons I love them I uh it's a shame that I believe I've I've discussed this before. It's a shame that uh, uh, Russ, Russie Taylor um, died recently because I think that for for all those years that sort of Minnie Mouse has been sort of for promotional materials and just kind of, especially in the latter years, just kind of being there in in children's entertainment. For, for preschoolers and whatnot, it's it's actually was refreshing for her to sort of uh, you know bust out her chops again um, in the way that she sort of did in the '90s. She was the uh, voice of she was the voice of uh, Strawberry Shortcake, um, that whole campaign, all those specials. And if you really want sort of a, a saccharine sweet take on just ha have that voice and yeah that was a great voice for her um she of course was uh fanny the uh, phantasm on uh, scooby-doo uh, uh, the ghoul school which was a fantastic performance she even did a uh repri a reprisal of it for the okko um as you all know, OKKO OK is owned by Cartoon Network, which is actually owned by Warner Brothers, and they bought out Hanna-Barbera a few years ago, which means they got their entire library, which means that now the Ghoul School characters belong to Warner Brothers, which means they can bring them back anytime they want to. They, they could make a Ghoul School series. They could totally do that if they wanted to. Um, but no, a Maxine, thank you. I will actually change that right now Maxine I have it on these little post-it notes I should make them bigger Maxine there we go um yeah I just there was just something off about the I think the whole first of all I think this whole pose is a little bit too short uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I fix it, kind of. I'm still not exactly happy with the, the final product, but it's not the worst thing I've ever drawn, at least in my opinion. Um, but getting back to uh, sort of the artistic philosophies. You know what? With the, uh, with the square, with, those, uh, with that legs, I should have uh, take if I wanted to actually get a good pose... I should have taken that, her right leg, and shifted it in perspective uh, along with, because you could have totally done that. Um, if you do the boxing out of the characters, you can figure out a way to sort of, like, like you see the box where the box, well, like the blue box meets the red box where her middle, you can adjust that and manipulate that in perspective. And it actually really helps to create a guide for that. I I did the box and then I just abandoned it. And also I 
it's this shitty thing where it's off perspective to the floor that I created. Everything's just not good. I mean, I just I just don't know what exactly I I did. Uh, it was just one of those kind of shitty off days. Also, I had a hell of a trouble with her duck bill. Uh, there was some references I saw from Donald um, from behind. Um, and even, you know, I'll just say it. I'm not exactly too wild about the newer uh, DuckTales design. I mean, I, I appreciate it, and they... Um, they definitely uh, have, how, how can I put this? There's definitely craft there, and there's definitely quality there. But there's just something about the angular design, especially within the duck bills. I always remember Donald Duck and those old cartoons because they just had such a, a weird, smooth, and very just stylized duck bills. And I always got sort of mesmerized seeing those move around in 3D space. And then you get that feeling here. I'm not, not again, not to take anything away from the, the, uh, the staff that's working on it. But, I mean, I just, I just kind of don't dig the, it gets a little too angular for my, my taste. And uh, I don't know, I don't think that's coming from a place of nostalgia where it's like, Ugh, I don't, I don't like it. Because I don't really have that problem with, again, going back to the Mickey Mouse shorts. That's a very stylized, very angular sort of take. But even then, uh, uh, Plucky, and Pluck, not Plucky, uh, Donald's, uh, Donald's bill is, has still got that curve to it. And, um... Like that very pronounced kind of, and then hip style, heavy stylized shading that sets it apart from the original. I think that might be something else. I'm not exactly in love with the the thin lines that they, the thin lines and then sort of heavy shading, especially underneath. You can see in the little reference I have there, the hair and uh, in the collar of her jacket and underneath her. Where the uh, jacket falls on her legs, you can see some more uh, very black as shading. Um, very car very comic booky. Um, very, and this whole series is meant to sort of uh, not only evoke the original series, but actually just the entirety of of Ducktales as a whole, um, which gets absolutely bonkers. Uh, the history of uh, Donald and and uh, and Scrooge and just, just like a, a ton of others, um, like the actual family tree that well, they've introduced characters. The the weird duck with the beanie, and uh, you've got Gladstone, who I who was in the originals. I, I remember him. Um, let's see, see, see. So you like the new designs better in theory than practice. Um, you know what? Actually, I'll tell you this, Underwolf. When they're moving, I don't really actually have a problem with it, which is very indicative of a lot of animated uh, just programmings. Um, in fact, people nitpick about in betweens. There's that. There's that guy that blew up recently. He was. He was going over the. The new Looney Tunes show with a fine tooth comb, and I will, I will uh, admit when I look at those new shorts, you can tell that they there is some in betweening, and it, it I, I you catch it sometimes, and it's 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 a little uh, not uh, I was gonna say it's a little distracting. Um, I believe I mentioned that in the Invader Zim uh, movie review I did on Familiar Faces, where I, there were definitely scenes that were done with tweening. Um, and that was just to, I don't know, save money in places. That's fine. Uh, this is basically... Uh, the new Looney Tunes shorts is basically trying to like reproduce those those shorts that 
like took months to create and then produce them for like I guess a TV show or no no pardon me a streaming service I'm not exactly sure about this whole HBO uh, Max thing um, especially since a lot of Cartoon Network show shows are now being sort of uh, siphoned off onto that service in order to to pack pack it up is is Cartoon Boomerang still a thing or does that did that fall apart uh, at some point but anyway there's this there was this guy uh, you probably it, he's been in the animation circles you know people have said he's he's at, been acting ridiculous and he goes over basically like actually like pretty banal uh, instances of just basic animation like the the, the tweening I'm talking about is at one point where Bugs Bugs head just moves, but you can tell that it's one clear image, and it's just kind of it, or one one solid mass pulled back. You move the neck joint back with it or stretch it, and then it moves back again, and you can tell. Okay, well that's clearly like tweening. That's fine. Um, he was going over some incredibly actually just basic animation techniques of fast movement i mean he was he was uh things that actually have been around since that no 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 not around since things that were actually created by chuck jones you may know that uh the dover boys which uh, side note or tangent i believe is in the public domain uh i for some reason warner brothers never re-upped on that which is sort of a shame. Um, actually, I, mean, I think it's fine. I, I take it back. Now that I not not that the words have fallen out of my mouth, I think it was a perfect short. I think it taught the animation industry a ton of lessons about smears and and pacing and everything and everything. I'm I'm trying to gleam the the chat as I talk. Um, yeah, it was. It's a perfect short, and if Warner Brothers didn't want to run those characters into the ground, then fine. Um, but what? Okay, let's see. Anthro Duck Anatomy is interesting. Their bodies are almost eggplants in shape. Hmm. Actually, you know, you can say that a lot about a lot of characters. But anyway, getting back to this guy. He was fixated on Porky just turning around real quick. And it was, and it, yeah, it wasn't a super smooth. When you go frame by frame, it doesn't look super smooth. But when you play it back, it looks fine. Because your, your brain is filling in the gaps. Uh, oh. Pardon me, iced tea. Your brain is filling in the gaps with fast motion. Um, so, in fact, you that's something an animator relies on, is, is f skipping frames or doing smears, or not skipping frames, just exaggerating motion very quickly in order to make things read. Um, and... Yeah, I mean that's that's literally the bread and butter of Warner Brothers animation. It's the one thing that set them apart from Disney, who all, who did want to make sort of everything kind of real smooth and and move realistically, or at least yeah, not not too realistically, but uh, uh, you know exaggerated enough, um, and then still keep in that that smooth pacing. That's part of me. Um, of course, we can't judge the quality of the shorts. Um, yeah, actually, I've I've seen I've seen wet I've seen the wet cement. I, I think it's good. I mean, uh, it's fine. I'm not gonna go actually go out and get like HBO Max because I really don't. Uh, I mean, I'm 
I'm honestly a, a Netflix guy. I like a lot of stuff that they're putting on. I'm I forgot to cover up the video again when I did this when I did the Picardo stream of this, and now I'm watching Hilda, which um, actually, if you want to talk about like really strong designs that are geometrical and work in you know moving then that's actually a pretty good uh that's a pretty good study um if you've seen if you've seen the new hilda and you've actually seen the original comics you can you'll know that there was actually um this this attempt at sort of simplification of her design as in comparison to the comic books just for the the sake of of production because that's what has to happen uh, Duck Dodgers was great. Yes, it was, Michael. People really don't understand furries at all. No, I guess not. Oh, She-Ra ended, and I finally got Katadoria. Um, you know what? I still haven't actually... I'm still stuck on season one of She-Ra. Uh, but I know, how it in, I know how it ends, but I don't know how how they get to the ending. Which is actually more important. Um, as someone who grew up in the shadow of the of Star Wars and its its cultural impact, knowing that you know Darth Vader is you know a, you know uh, Luke's father from the very beginning, um, that was a weird moment. If I could just tell you that, uh, let's just yeah let's let's just go over like. There was actually a video, a really nice one, about spoilers. I forget who made it. I'm trying to think. Oh, uh, Talking Tropes. They were talking about uh, spoilers and, and plot twists. And she was basically saying that uh, if a story is well constructed, then the plot twist should just be like... It should then serve as a recontextualization of what you've just watched, even though if you you know what the twist is, um, f f ah, you know because then you can watch it again and know it's coming, and then that builds up suspense and it recontextualizes the entire movie. Um, and I, I want to go back. Let's. I want to go back to uh, Star Wars because. I was, I just, gr growing up and knowing that, that Darth Vader was Luke's father, it's like, okay, well, I know this is coming. But it was still a great scene uh, because of all the build-up to it and because of the actual acting of, of, of you know, uh, Mark Hamill and, and uh, uh, Jones and to a lesser extent, I forget, I'm sorry, I forget the names of... Uh, I forget the name of the guy who actually played Darth Vader. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it still had a it had a really visceral gut impact to me watching it live, even though I knew what the twist was. Um, sort of going to... Let's talk about Hot Fuzz, which is my favorite example of a twist. I don't actually... Uh, show of hands, are there people who actually haven't seen Hot Fuzz? Well, let's just say that there's a twist. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming most of you have. It's it's an older movie, a uh, very popular movie. People have sung the praises of the uh, Corn, Cor, Coronado. It's, it's an English ice cream, but they call it the Something Trilogy. Um... Yes, James Earl Jones. I'm sorry if I just called him Jones. Um, but I was going to say, there's a twist in there that recontextualizes the whole movie. And then from the very beginning, when you rewatch it again, you're watching certain characters. And by certain characters, I mean all the characters. And you're, you're trying to figure out what they're doing and what they're hatching and what the plan is. And so... Uh, yeah, I'm. I don't know why, but you mentioning uh, the finale of Shira and just having it, the whole thing entirely spoiled. Um, I didn't even know that they would pursue that, but 
yeah, it'll be fun to actually watch and see how it gets there. Um, yeah, yeah. 2007, Nerdy Benson. That's when Hot Fuzz was the corn, the cornetto, the cornetto. So it's just cornetto. I guess that's what the the cone is made out of. Hmm. Um. But yeah, the three flavors of the yeah, it's it's basically I forget what you call them. Here we call them drumsticks. Uh, I guess would be the, the the equivalent, and for the American audiences, so that's weird. It'd be like the drumstick uh, trilogy. Uh, but yeah, that movie is old. God, I remember when that came out. I, I that's that's my favorite of the uh, the trilogy. Uh, Max Forever says, I just want to say, Chad, drawing characters at this angle is a bitch. Probably why I wanted to do it. It was, it was a pain in the ass, especially I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not in love with that arm. Uh, that's not, um, but I probably wanted to do it just to see, just to do it. Just to say, like, you know, just, just stretch your artistic chops. And see what you can do. Um, Cornetto means little horn in Italian. Okay, so it's it's like the cone of an ice cream. Cool. Actually, is the cone itself? Is it just a is it just a paper cone, or is there actually a cone inside of it? I'm not sure anymore. It's been a while. I think I might be actually mistaking them for push pops. Um, actually, you know what? The hand is not bad. It's where the hand meets the uh, the wrist. <sighs> yeah, that could have been a little. Well, no. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that could have been a little flatter angle. Oh, well, no, meh. I don't know. It's so hard when you you're looking for references, but you can't see the back of your own head. Uh, the beak was difficult. Yeah, yeah, the beak was definitely sort of a, a problem. Um, especially I only I only had one reference, and that was a picture of Donald from behind. Uh, but anyway, I'm just starting to ink now, just sort of, um, I don't know, getting it down. Did I fix the hand? Now I'm curious. Ugh, what the hell? Also, I think I was having trouble with the pen again. Not, not the pen itself, but I just changed the, um... Oh, what was it? This, this protective guide. And it had this sort of, it's got this sort of waxy film on it that I'm not too in love with. Um, I actually, I took not, not, I took the end of a regular pen and I kind of pushed it over this just to try to get some traction. Kind of like um, the way you'd scrape uh, the bottom of your shoes, a new pair of shoes. To make sure that you don't uh, slip. Rest in peace. Um, oh God! Shoot, he he's he's hilarious, and I knew his name just before I start. I even thought about talking about him before the podcast started, but I. Uh, Stiller, 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 Jerry, not Jerry Stiller. God. I had his name in my head, and I was going to be like, I'll talk about him. And, uh, oh, God, I'm, this is bullshit. I, I need better notes. What do I have here? I have nothing. I, I have anim, I have Guide. I have uh, DuckTales. I have some. I have some notes, but I don't. Will, William, oh, whatever. No, actually, I, Huey, I, I did forget her tale. 
but I uh, remembered it at the very end. So it, it'll it'll come up, and it's it was pretty much a, a quick cosmetic fix to uh, just add the little white tail at the end. And yes, Jerry Stiller. Um, Jerry Stiller and Will William. Come on. Hold on. Will. Uh, Willard. Fred Willard. Okay, pardon me. Fred Willard. He played. Uh, God, he played. He played so many voices. He was the boogeyman on uh, Billy and Mandy. He. He was a court. He was in. Uh, he was in Wall E as the actual live anime live, live action president. Live animation. Live action president. Which was always weird. A very weird choice. Um, I think he was uh, he was the grandfather on, uh, on The Loud House. Shit. I mean... Crap. We've just lost so many people. I don't... I, it, I, I don't think it was... Uh, I don't think it was the uh, COVID... At least I'm not sure. I haven't read anything about that. Um, do, 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 do. Never realized that Jerry Stiller was Ben Stiller's dad. Always knew him as Mr. Constanza. Yeah. I re no, actually, they worked together in... Um, what was it? Zoolander. That was a fun movie that sort of got a cult... Uh, sort of a cult following now. Um, yeah, uh, uh, Jerry Stiller, um, he, did, he did a ton of voices too. Uh, well, actually, you know what, let's just look at him up. Do, 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 do. Pretty sure it was old age, yeah, of course. I mean, he was, I think he was 90-something. Um, Jerry Stiller, American comedian, age. Yeah, he was. Oh, come on, Google. Hurry up. Chop, chop. Huh. Okay. What's the matter? Hmm. I don't have that many windows open. Subway. Oh, yeah, I ordered a sandwich once. Um, uh, Fred Willard is the host of a show totally obsessed. Oh, God, two of the three pets from Teacher's Pets are dead. What? Oh, yeah, that's right. That's where I... He's the bird. He was the bird. Um... Uh... David O.G. Styers? Huh. I don't... I, I know he's the voice of the cat, but I don't know... Uh, oh, he was also the principal from Fish Hooks? Okay. I was trying to think about what other voices he did. He was, you know, as always, animate, an, animated and bombastic, even in real life. Ah. <sighs> And then uh, just a few years ago, we lost the, uh, speaking of Disney, we lost um, the voice of Booster and uh, a Fanboy on Freakazoid. Um, Booster was a Booster from um, the Adventures of, uh, or the Intergalactic, no, what was it called? The, the Adventures of Star Command, there we go. The Buzz Lightyear and the Star Command or something um but he played booster cogsworth oh cogsworth he played cogsworth oh crap shit i can't believe it we've lost so many 
Um, well, someone asked a question. Uh, CR, do you have any tips on recording voiceovers for video projects? Um, actually, I'll just be perfectly honest with you. The best tip I can have is get a good microphone. Uh, get a good microphone. Um, because after I got this one, the H1 Zoom, um, then it has honestly been like the quality of this microphone is fantastic better than anything i've ever had and it is i don't know how pricey it is now um i got this one and it was a gift and it was a hundred dollars at the time um but other than that back even back when i was working with uh just a regular old microphone i'd say find a Find a place. Try and use um, cushioning. You know these uh, these pads are great for reducing your sound. Um, if you want to, you you don't have to use this. You can like maybe use pillows uh, in a very small room, and maybe even line them up against the microphone. Um, learn how to. Uh, what was I going to say? Learn the ins and out of your editing program. Uh, your yeah, your your sound editing program, where you can figure out cleanup and uh, normalization, and then uh, boosting if if that need is something you need. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah. I miss Stan Lee. I was thinking about Glenn Shaddix as Otho the other day. As Otho. Glenn Shaddix as Otho. Huh, hold on. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah. Beetlejuice. And the mayor from Nightmare Before Christmas. That's, I, I think he died right around the time that I made the uh, the uh, Nightmare Before Christmas uh, card game review. Hmm. The, yeah, the lady who played Dexter and Chucky from Rugrats died. She was also the voice of uh, Bunny Rabot on the Saturday morning uh, Sonic the Hedgehog series. Uh, yeah. I guess, yeah, yeah. There's There's been a lot. Hmm. What's this? Oh, it just kind of froze. I, I stopped and started the video, and it just went off. We missed a few little details. Oh. Everything looks better with nice, cleaner lines. That's one thing I guess you should keep in mind. Is that there have been times when I have had horrible sketches. And there's so only so much time you can... Only so many times you can go over a sketch before you have to finally clean it up with, like, hard ink. And then it'll... It'll look good when it's when it's done. And it's got some sort of nice clean lines on top of it it, it will actually look better good eh, good is relative it will look better and i found that out um they were back when i was i would say before i got this tablet but, but when i was still working on just a regular old drawing tablet you know without a screen i would uh, like maybe work on a sketch like once one one pass to get every all the all the anatomy down another time to get details down and then a third time to make sure everything looked absolutely perfect and clean um, and then at some point it's I, I just sort of I, I think I just had to 
start working faster. And that's when I realized that, oh, okay, well, if you absolutely know, if you're confident enough in your lines, then you can go over your sketch, even when it's fairly, you know, still sloppy and sort of rough. And then you can make a drawing look look much nicer and and just fine and detailed and finished with a nice polish um there will be times when you sort of maybe jump the gun a little bit and a hand does just doesn't quite look right i do that a lot especially with hands and you'll have to uh go back into the sketch layer and kind of uh, go over it again and again to try and get it to look as nice as you can Hello, crazy day. How's it going? Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Has there ever been times when you thought the opposite, an artwork looking better when a sketch prior to... Wait. Huh? Okay. Has there ever been a time when you thought the opposite, P uh, you know, uh, comma, an artwork looking much better sketched prior to cleaning it up with lines? Um, you know what? I was not really because I always there's a times when my confidence gets a little shaky, but by the time you actually get it inked, I think everything looks much better. There have been times when I've colored uh, a, a, some line art, and I didn't think it was as strong as it was uh, when it was just line art. Um, but I will say that sometimes I will like each one equally. Uh, there are times when you create a sketch and it's got like all this this raw energy and just, just movement. In fact, I've, there was, uh, again, going back to uh, video essays, there was a video essay where they used the animatics or the rough animation for Beauty and the Beast. And uh, you could see... I think it was, I think Glenn animated that. Um, and you can see all the pencil markings and the, sort of the, the, the rough and the power and, the, and just the, the, the raw movements of the pencils. Um, and then uh, you have to ink it and you have to color it in order to make it a finished project because you can't just be like, okay, everybody, here's this, like, we thought that this looked just fine as a sketch, so... You know, um, so yeah, there are times when you lose a lot of the energy um, from a sketch to the final project. Um, there are actually some artists that um, I follow. I'm not going to name names. Um, nobody in the chat right now, uh, but I'm not going to name names. But there are some artists who actually I prefer their sketch work to their actual finished line art. Because, again, I think they do have such this sort of raw energy and the way they build up the lines and the figures. And they just kind of create the shapes. And then when they do their line art, um, again, it's just sort of, uh, they lose some of that. Um, even though they do have, like, maybe a kind of sort of uh, sketchy style or where you use, like, you know, you go over lines a couple times. Um there's one artist um, when I talked to, uh, Plague of Gripes, and we've talked a few times. And then I believe one of his... We, 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 we both have different styles. And he complimented me on my line art because he always says, Oh, wow, your art, your lines are so clean. and uh, Which is weird because I always admired the energy that he... That was just... That's in his... That's in his line work because it's always there's a flow to it there's a flow but um hold on a second what's going on oh okay nope just i thought the video froze for a second but it didn't um or maybe one part of it did let me check let me just move this a little bit yeah there we go just skipped ahead a little bit um 
There was, uh, let's see, I need to try sketching again. I used to draw okay, and then I stopped and lost the ability. It's it's hard. you got to keep doing it every day. Um, that's the only way you become a professional in it, even if you don't think you're very good at it. Do I play D&D? &D? No, I, I don't. I mean, I, I would, I'm always interested. I've always been interested. Uh, well, not always. In more recent years, when D&D &D has become more accessible, and uh, I've gotten into sort of the lore of the characters, I will say that I've been interested. Um, but what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Basically, it just two different types of styles between my design, Plague of Gripes, even that you can see in the beak. I'm trying to like make it like a clean, precise. I'm using vector uh, lines, for goodness sakes, because I can't quite get the beak the way I want it. Um, and he has a very sort of free-flowing, sketchy style that's very dynamic. And uh, sometimes I look at his drawings and I'm like, ah, okay, yeah, I love it. I mean, I think it's great. And then other times I think. Ah, but it's just not my style. I don't think I could actually do that and then be happy with what I'm doing. I, I there's something about me that likes that that clean, uh, clean, very black, very uh, thick line that tapers at points. Oh, I don't want to do it professionally. I just want to have the ability. Uh, you know. Um, well, okay. Well, then you still need to practice. That's that's just a fact of life. Uh, do, 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 do. Hey, CR, what's your favorite Japanese animator other than Miyazaki films? Um, I guess anyone that's ever worked on TMS. Um, yeah, I love like the early '80s TMS and the '90s sort of Superman and Batman stuff. Um, like shit, uh, Batman: Return of the Joker is I probably that might be my favorite Batman film like of all of them even the live action ones I think that one might be my favorite uh, and the animation certainly it's like TMS at their at their peak or, or I, I would actually argue it's their last final hurrah they've done other stuff but I think that's sort of when it's been like oh wow that that is some really nice movements. Um, speaking of which, Miyazaki did have his start at TMS. He worked on Sherlock Hound, and he did a bunch of different episodes. He did he did this one episode of Sherlock Hound, and you can totally tell it's a Miyazaki uh, production because it's about. Um, oh, let me see. I'm, I'm trying to like Moliarty is flooding the market with these fake coins and there's this one moment where the inspector he's talking to some other policemen he's he's uh they're at the bank they're talking to all of these um uh bankers and they're trying to like crack this investigation and there's this one part where uh where a a banker was all like oh i found a counterfeit coin and he holds it up and he shows it to the investigator and uh you know, inspector, or inspector, that's what they call it. And uh, he shows it to her and he's like, oh, okay, well, one coin, that's not a big problem. And then all of a sudden from the background you see, I found another. And, you know, they're like surprised. And it's like, oh, so soon? And then the, all of a sudden, like, the room slowly interrupt, just erupts with all of these uh, bankers, like, discovering that all of their money is fake. And you can tell it's a Miyazaki point because all of a sudden everything just dissolves into chaos. And people are pouring piles of fake coins, one on top of each other. And the pile is just getting big and it's starting to overflow. And just, just you know, it's that, it's like, it reminded me of, of the, uh, the bathhouse scene. Where the water is just overflowing as the river spirit is being coming clean. Or, uh... Just yeah, you could just totally tell. Oh, like oh my God, Miyazaki totally directed this. In hindsight, it's a it's a it's an amazing show, and you can watch it all on TMS's official YouTube channel. 
Um, I think, I mean, it's been a while, but I think it's all on there. Uh, actually, you know what? I think I may have checked recently, and I think they may have, like, only have a few episodes on. But there was a point where they put the entire series on, and it was amazing. That's, like, one of the, my first memories as a kid. Uh, no, I didn't forget the... I forgot the tale, but I didn't forget the tale forever. Yeah, it'll, it'll pop up. Um, uh, there was... My, uh, my parents and my grandparents used to rent this cabin. And, uh, we always used to go up there, and it was... It was, it was fine. I mean... I remember it as just a cabin, but I do remember going to the local video store and renting movies and, and stuff like that. Um, and I remember certain certain watching certain things. I remember one time we saw. Uh, let's see, what was it? I remember Goober and the Ghostbusters. Not Go no, 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 no. Goober and the Ghost Chasers or something. It was one of those like Scooby Doo rip off things and i just remember watching it because i got a vhs of it uh but i did get um i did get a vhs copy of sherlock hound and it had uh let's say i believe it had the episode with the orphan on it and i think it may have had the episode with the counterfeit coins on it as well um but it definitely had an episode where they were there was a, a, a biplane and uh, the the maid uh, or like, yeah, the Sherlock Sherlock Holmes had a maid and she was like the, the one female character on the show. And there was one point where Sherlock Holmes is on like a bike and the maid is flying the airplane or had to run and jump on the airplane or something. It was very exciting. I just remember the, the climax or the, when everything was said and done. They did that thing where they, they grab the maid and they throw her up and they say hip hip hooray, hip hip hooray. And I just remember that being such a clear like vision in my mind from just like a very early age. I must have been like maybe three. And I still remember just like this show because I hadn't seen anything like it before. Um, so yeah, that's just like one... I, I'm... I was into Miyazaki before it was cool. There, I said it. Anyway, you're going to work? Okay, cool. Uh, see you, Cora. You be good. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, like, Miyazaki was always fascinated with, with, uh... With the aviation. He put it in everything he could. I think there was also something about a submarine. I think Moliarty was using a submarine to, like, uh, uh, transport the coins? I don't know. It's been a while since I've actually seen it. Uh, draws for an hour on the wrong layer. No, I didn't draw on the wrong layer. I've made that mistake before, but I have not done that. Um... This is me just going over it. Just um, you, you, uh, you, fo you. Uh, there's a there's a um, setting in the uh, in the line folder that you can uh, that you can toggle, and you can actually color the lines. Um, yeah, this is not this is not bad. It's not great either. Uh, her bill is a too much is too high on her mouth. Um, I've tried to kind of combine the design of, of the old style of, uh, DuckTales build and, um, this new style. And it did, it sort of, uh, it sort of abandoned both the, uh, the finer qualities of both. Um, like, like this, this... This bill that they have in the show, it's got a very strong angular design. It's very, like, uh, it's very expressive. And then the original, the bill is very fluid and and just has just, like, this unique design to it. Um, 
you know, like most animated deck builds. Um, are you allowed to post links? Actually, I have to give you mod privileges first. Hold on. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. And you are a mod. Boy, I went really high with that. Uh, but anyway, you're a mod and you can totally, uh, you can totally post now. Um, but the bit, the bill is a little too high. The angle is a little weird. Um, I should have just, uh, I don't know. Sometimes I'll do this. I'll, sometimes when I'm having trouble, I will build a 3D face or at least just like an, uh, an orb in Blender and then maybe put like, like a, just a plane. I should have done that with the bill. It would have been so easy now that I think about it. Just like make an orb in Blender, send out another plane, angle it the way I want it, and then see where it falls within the space. Do, 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 do. So what do you, what's this? This is a breakdown of the scene that I was talking about. Hold, hold on to your butts. I have just, op I'm using the precious, precious internet. Okay. <laughs> actually, it's pretty stable. I think my computer is... Actually, screw this. Okay, here we go. I was going to say I could jump on my phone again. Like I did for uh, posting the Twitter account. Boy, this is taking a sweet time, isn't it? Sherlock Holmes, The Souvenir, and this is on 4th Gar... Garibin... 4th com. Okay, so this is a breakdown. As soon as it loads. Okay. Uh, I guess this is just an online article. Between uh, November 6th, 1984 and May... 21st, 1985, 26 episodes of the animated Sherlock aired in Japan. Hey, 85. That's my that's my birthday. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, one example of the 11th episode broadcast in 85. Okay, cool. Uh, the Sovereign Coins. The Sovereign Gold Coins. Uh, to do briefly the plot, Sherlock Holmes investigating the uh, disappearance of 20 Sovereign Gold Coins from a Pacific... Vault. Uh, yeah, so... Huh. Okay, this is an old... This is like an old thing, and it's it's freezing up on me. But yeah, that's pretty much a breakdown of what I was talking about. Uh, are we still live? Because now my... Okay, my, my preview just went blank. Um... Yeah, also, good a little bit of good line art and just a little bit of good shading will sort of help clear, clean up a very suspect piece of work. That hair, I'm also not happy. I'm just, I'm just, there's, I'm, I'm real nitpicky about this whole thing. Um, even though I looked at it the other day and I was like, oh, this is fine. But if I stare at it more than, like, maybe, ugh. Maybe like five minutes, then it kind of starts to sicken me. But you know what? I think that I think that happens with a lot of artists. That, especially there are some artists that uh, I don't know. I see their artwork, and I'm like, oh gosh, this is beautiful. And then I do start to notice like little problems and details. And then I, but there's this weird thing where it's like, oh, this is totally not a problem uh, because the overall artwork is beautiful. But there are also things, how can I put this? If I had drawn them, I would think they were ugly. But other people have drawn them. So I actually, I think they're like, not only perfectly acceptable, but they're they're beautiful in the overall design of the figure because it, it's a unique style. Um, does that make any sense? 
maybe that just means that I'm persnickety about my own artwork and then I will see other people the same mistakes in other people's artwork and I will ignore them just because not even ignore them because it still looks fine overall it's it's you know maybe it's just weird um an artist is their own worst critic yep uh, Daisy actually had that art style on old Daisy Duck short. Yeah, yeah. Actually, this whole redesign is based on um, Donald's diary, which is probably like the most infamous of the late 60s Disney shorts, I would say. Um, maybe. I think it was, I want to say it's the 60s. Donald's diary. Hold on. Do, 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 do. Donald's Diary. Donald. Okay, 1954. I was off by six years. For some reason, I always I always think that that came out like in the 60s. Maybe because it's just, just such, such a huge shift in design, especially when it comes to actually Daisy. Um, because she's got more like more of a more of a like curvy feminine figure and she's not like the like someone said earlier the eggplant on on legs um, yeah she's I, I, I kind of tried to give her those those kind of legs that she has although they weren't uh, they're not tapered the the feet are look oh, god I'm, I'm I'm gonna watch Hilda for a second and soothe my my soul. I was gonna say the leg, that back leg is a little bit too big. The front leg's a little too small. I mean, sometimes I look at it and I think, oh, well, it's got character, and I like that. But on the other hand, I'm like the designer in me, and just like the the, the part of me that wants everything to like be perfect is just like, oh. And even that's counterintuitive sometimes to what I want to do, because. I've done that where I've made it look like I've made a drawing look like I've I've painstakingly go, gone over angles and the exact like circumference and curvature of a single object and I'm like for some reason I just don't like it and then I go over it once with a line and I just go I just get sick and fed up and I go and I go and then it looks a million times better because it's more organic and it's got character to it and I'm like oh okay well Shoot, why didn't I just do that from the beginning? Um, and again, it's uh, that's sort of where it's good to sort of force yourself to work through a drawing like this, where you're... It's kind of a pain in the ass, but you just kind of... You hold your nose and you do your best to like push through it. Because that will also help you recognize certain problems that can occur later oh, later down the road. I'm sorry. Oh. I shouldn't do... I do this right after dinner. And then I start talking and I have to talk for like an hour or so. And that always just... Uh, that's always a bad combination. It's like on Game Grumps. They, you can always tell when they, after they've had lunch, because Aaron is especially sort of uh, belchy and gassy. Um, two hilarious results uh, concerning uh, Dan. Um, here's one little trick. Well, here, here's just me trying to fix the, the position. Here we go. I guess we're pretty much also done. But there's one trick that you caught at the very end. It's where I, I took a color and I just kind of highlighted the figure and I kind of uh, tried to pull it over, almost creating a kind of uh, glow. Um, yeah, that, that kind of helped. And you know what? The, the sequence did add a lot to it. Yeah, I don't hate this. I still, I still have a little bit of problems with that arm. Maybe it should 
I could pull it a little bit closer to the body. But then again, then this arm is like really long too. I could pull that closer to the body too if I really wanted to go over and fix this. But overall, I think it's just a good gesture drawing. Um, it's got it's got a lot of attitude, a little bit of sass. Um, I think it's fine. I, although her fate, her I should have maybe added some eyebrows or something, or worked on the expression. It's sort of like generic. Um, So, uh, I'm sorry, uh, can I just say I'm extremely sick of YouTubers feeling need to burp in the middle of a take? Um, well, I, oh, you mean in scripted videos. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, that's, that's an easy gag. Um, so I guess, you know, when you don't know what to do, you just do that. Oh, I can't do it. I need something carbony. I was going to go out on that. Anyway, yeah, this is uh, this is Daisy Duck. I could probably do better if I took another shot at it, which I will, because that's the point of a daily drawing, is that you sort of, uh, what was it? Chuck Jones had an art instructor who famously said, we've all got 100,000 bad drawings in us. I, I think it may, that might be a little too high. But the point is, is that you just, you know, you work on what you can work on. And like I said, I'm sort of happy. This is more like a like a gesture drawing more than anything. But I still kind of look at it and I think, eh, I could, I could do better. Now I'm looking at the leg and I think the back one could have been a little thinner and the, the ones that's closer to the viewer could have been thicker. Okay, whatever. I'm, I'm done with